Welcome to Conscious Confidence Radio, a timeless wisdom with Sarah Main. Follow host Sarah Main on her ongoing journey of conscious confidence and gain timeless wisdom to unleash unparalleled confidence. A conscious confidence. Learn to ignite the living spark of wisdom, a new narrative for fulfillment contained in Sanskrit and the ancient, powerful, engaging, and fun conscious conversations to discover your own magnificent true self. Learn to dispel the fear shadow as Sarah provides essential knowledge about embracing change and the power of transformation. Get ready. Conscious Confidence starts now. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to Conscious Confidence Radio. Welcome to you. And today we are going to be talking about getting aligned and finding balance. So today's show is all about alignment and balance. And it's a wonderful topic and I get asked about it so much. People just feel out of sorts. They don't quite know how to feel better. They're interested in well-being. They want to be happy. They want to to live a fulfilled life, but just every day they're just the stresses and strains on them just lead them to feeling out of sorts, out of alignment. And yoga and meditation and all those things help, but there's a lot of people that don't do that or they struggle to find time to do that because of a busy life. They've got family, they've got a job, they've got, you know, a house to look after or whatever, a home. So alignment and balance is critical. It's crucial to our ultimate well-being and to finding conscious confidence and to feeling settled within ourselves so that every day just isn't a scramble of getting through things. So today's show, Getting Aligned and Finding Balance, is what we're going to be talking about. And so let's get into it. We've got a story to start with. So there's a, a university classroom and a professor walks in and it's a normal day and all the students are waiting for the normal lecture to start, and the professor gets out a a glass jar and then he gets out a bag of big rocks and he starts filling the jar with the big rocks right up to the, the top, right up to the rim. And then at a certain point he turns around when the when the big rocks are right up to the top of the jar, he turns around to the students and he says, Is the jar full? And everyone goes, yeah, sure, the jar's full, absolutely. Nothing more can fit into it. So he says, okay. So then he gets out another bag of rocks, but they're little small stones. And he starts filling the jar, the already full jar, with the small stones. And so the small stones fall in between all the cracks of the big rocks. And then... He fills and fills and fills until the jar is full of little stones right up to the top. And he stops. Everyone's watching now. And he says, is the jar full? And they say, absolutely. Not a scary more space in there, really. And he says, okay. So then he gets out a bag of sand and he starts pouring it into the jar that's already full, full of big rocks. And all the spaces have been filled by the little stones, the little little pebbles. And then the sand starts falling in between all the little gaps that you don't normally notice. And he fills and fills and fills and the sand fills up all the spaces until the jar's completely full up to the top. And then he turns and says, is the jar full? And everyone says, absolutely. Now it's really full. We didn't think of it like this. And he gives them a moment and he says, what does this mean to you? What does this jar tell you? And then they had an amazing conversation. He said, this jar is your life. And these big rocks are the really important things. So fill your life with the big things first. Then... The next, the little stones, they're the the next level of importance and priority in your life. Then fill your life with those. And finally, then fill up all the spaces in between with the sand. And the big rocks are the important things like family, friends, love, 
fulfillment, health, well-being, relationships. Then all the smaller stones are the things like your job, hobbies, recreational things to do, and then and your interests. And then the sand are all the material things in our life, all the stuff we buy, time we spend on telly, watching telly, watching movies, binging on Netflix, online. And he said, That's, that should tell you the priority. Fill your life with the important things, the big rocks first. Then fill up the spaces in between with the stones like your hobbies, your job, work, obviously. And then the sand, let it fill up all the space that's left in between. But don't fill the jar with sand first. Fill it with the important things first. And that story is fantastic because that is a real lesson in how to find balance, how to be in alignment making good decisions so that we get the important things in first. And that's getting our priorities right is a conscious choice and that's how we actually start the journey of alignment and balance. So finding balance from the stress that we normally feel where we're out of alignment and we're tense and unhappy and unfulfilled, it's where the mind is saying one thing, the heart's pulled off in another direction, feeling something else. The body's pulled around by this tension between the mind and the heart. And it's because our priorities are misplaced. There's nothing wrong. It's like the story of the, of the jar. It's just our priorities are a bit out of whack. So in Sanskrit, the concept of balance, the word balance is santulana, santulana. And it comes from the concept of measuring so think of a set of scales. If you wanted to balance a set of scales, you have to measure out the right amount, the same amount on the other side to achieve balance. So it's in this act of measuring. So we have balance and measuring out. So just get your mind around that and start thinking about that in these terms, alignment in terms of measuring out what you do. How much are you going to do of something? How much are you going to eat? How much are you going to sleep? How much are you going to socialise? How much are you going to be online? Measuring it out. Not too much, not too little. And usually it's too much and therefore something else um, suffers and we miss out on something that we need. So the whole concept of Santulana, balance, is really crucial here in terms of alignment. And the essence of measuring is knowing when to stop. So think of the scales and I'm pouring sand, pouring sand, pouring sand. I've got to know when to stop when the scales are in balance. So the essence of measure is knowing when to stop. And we're only going to know that, and I get asked this so much, we're only going to know this in the present moment. I can't tell you now. You need to know in the present moment, and the knowledge is there, you will need to know and you will know when to stop. So Sanskrit's telling us what to do. That wisdom in Sanskrit is everything we need. So the essence of measure is knowing when to stop. And that's how we get the balance. Now, I can promise you that if we actually practice that, if you actually practice that, you will find an enormous change in your whole sense of well-being, your happiness, your calmness, your energy. And it's just knowing when to stop. So not too much of anything and not too little. Now think of ourselves as comprised of a physical body, mind, heart and spirit. And if you think of each of those as bodies, a physical body, a mental body, an emotional body and a spiritual body, just like the physical, the physical needs food, exercise and rest, nourishment, movement and rest, food, exercise and rest. Then think so does the mental body. It needs food, exercise and rest. The emotional body, food, exercise and rest. And the spiritual body, food, exercise and rest. And the question then is, what's food for the mental body? What's exercise for the emotional body? They're good questions. Now we're thinking, now we're making a difference. 
if we provide food, exercise and rest for all the parts of ourselves, the physical, the mental, the emotional and the spiritual, I can promise you that's where alignment is. So my suggestion is to try it and find out for yourself. So try it and find out for yourself. So the essence of measure is knowing when to stop. So pick some activity or some aspect of your life and see where you need to stop doing what you're doing. So let's say watching TV. You need to actually be connected in the present moment and say, have I, have I watched enough television? And if you can get this feeling of your energy is telling you you need to get up and move, then turn that TV off and get up and move and go and do something. Like listen to some beautiful music, read a good book, go for a walk. Or if it's late at night, go to bed, get some decent sleep. Sometimes if we're, we tend to be a bit lazy, then the point of knowing when to stop may be indicated by you need to persevere a bit further before you stop. If you're someone that overworks as an, and is sort of a bit driven, then the point of when to stop may be you need to give yourself a break and stop now. See how the measures are different. Some requires a bit more perseverance before stopping. Some you stop, have a break, let go. Um, and other times it's sort of pause for a moment, take a break and then continue on. The measure will be indicated in the present moment. You will know, you will feel it in the body. You'll know it in your mind and heart. But it's about being present and connecting with what is needed in terms of measure in the present moment. So it's living our life fully, but it's everything has its place, everything has its measure, not too much, not too little. And that's the essence of coming into alignment and coming into balance. And the story of the jar and the rocks is a fantastic guide in terms of how to achieve that balance, how to achieve that measure and alignment. So we're going to take a short break and after the break we're going to go into our mailbag. People ask me questions all the time so I've got a mailbag, ask me, ask me your questions, ask me anything and I've got a whole stack of questions and I'm going to start answering them and we're going to also discover how we can find out more about conscious confidence and I'm going to sing some Sanskrit so you can hear some actual Sanskrit so we'll be back soon. TransformationTalkRadio.com. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome to Conscious Confidence Radio. I'm Sarah Main. And today we've been looking at the whole area of alignment and balance. And before the break, we talked about coming into alignment and balance by using the wisdom in Sanskrit of Santulana, which means balance. And the Sanskrit word actually comes from the root tool, and it said, and the Sanskrit says, that in the act of actually measuring, you'll find balance. So think of scales. When you're measuring out something in scales to bring them into balance, you need to know when to stop when they're at the point of balance. So the essence of measure is knowing when to stop, <clears throat> not too much of anything and not too little. And that means it's food, exercise and rest for the whole being, the whole body, mind, heart and spirit, our whole self which is made up of a body, mind, heart and spirit. And so food, exercise and rest is for the whole person. And if you think of alignment and balance in that way, you may just turn the TV off and go and read a good book. You may get out your uh, paints if you love painting and start painting again. Get out a musical instrument and start playing again. Call up a friend and go out and, and meet them. Do something different. Fill yourself up with some beautiful experiences. Go out in nature. Uh, meditate. Have some quiet time. If you're working, uh, persevere a bit longer. If you tend to just sort of get lazy and go into a bit of a dream, persevere and sharpen your mind and get some focus. So the essence of measure is knowing when to stop and finding that balance of activities in the day so, so that it's not just all work or it's not just all being online and um, in front of a screen the whole time. So it's getting that balance, not too much of anything, not too little. Just like the physical body needs food, exercise and rest, so does the rest of us. So moving on with um, what we're going to do today, we're going to go get into the mailbag. So it's ask me anything, ask me your questions. 
And I get a lot of questions and one of them is from a guy who said even after meditating and doing breathing exercises every day and he's really diligent, like he's got young kids and he's doing this every day, he's finding time, he's getting up early and he's, he's putting some time aside for himself. He said even after doing all this meditation and breathing exercises, what do you do when you feel great one day and just blah the next and completely unmotivated the next? And that perplexed him. What do you do? Well, I can tell you uh, from experience that these states of feeling fantastic one day and blah the next, they come and go. That's the way it is. The practices of meditation and presence, they just go on regardless. doesn't matter how you feel. Just keep meditating. doesn't matter what form of meditation you're practicing. If you're feeling unmotivated, doesn't matter. Just practice anyway. If you're feeling super energized and inspired and clear and calm, fantastic. Keep practicing anyway. Because those experiences are wonderful when you're feeling inspired and on top of the world. But they do pass because they're just states and experiences. And you're going to get times where it's the energy is a bit lower and you do feel a bit blah, basically. You just keep going through it regardless. So you're meditating for the sake of meditation and not for the sake of creating some state or experience because that's where the real potency is. So don't be moved or, um, what's the word, put off by these changing states. They're going to happen. It's like the weather. Okay, next question. When life is going pear-shaped, how does Sanskrit help? And this was by a single mum who said to me, okay, Sanskrit, fantastic. But when my life is going pear-shaped, how is Sanskrit going to help? And it's amazing how Sanskrit can help just by going back to the wisdom contained in some of the words. It can re-inspire you to meet the challenges if your life's going pear-shaped i'm guessing that there's some challenges there meet those challenges with an open mind and an open heart putting your best foot forward with positivity with love um, with a willingness to learn with gratitude for the opportunities now sometimes that can be a big ask <clears throat> excuse me sometimes that can be a big ask but that's what's being called for that's what's being asked of you. And if the challenges are there, you can cope with them. And that's a certain, that's a given, that if the challenges are there, you're strong enough to cope with them. You have that within you, that you are strong enough. So the wisdom in Sanskrit just gives us a new perspective, like with balance and alignment. There's a lot out there on balance and alignment. But the wisdom of measuring, knowing when to stop, not too much, not too little, in the present moment, knowing when to stop. That's all contained in just that Sanskrit word, santulana, balance. Of course, we've got to practice it. Of course, we've got to um, test it out for ourselves. That's where the real transformation is. But that is the way forward. So in those challenges, the wisdom in Sanskrit says, feel your feet on the ground, come into the present moment, let go of any reactions to the situation, take a deep breath and ask yourself, what is the next best thing I need to do here to move forward? That's what Sanskrit's telling you. Um, you may not know that and you don't have to study Sanskrit to know that, but that's the wisdom and the potency in Sanskrit. And then take the next best thing, the next best action that's indicating that needs to be done in that moment. And it's the next best action rather than a reaction to the challenges that are occurring. So that's the, one of the ways Sanskrit can help you. Apart from learning some Sanskrit and then actually chanting because the sound is so powerful. Um, and that's certainly something that's learnable is a little bit of Sanskrit and just come back and remember a word like Shanti, which means peace, or prema, which means love, or balam, which means strength, or smitam, which means smile. Just one simple word may unlock a different response in you. So Sanskrit's got so many different ways it can help you directly 
when you feel your life is going pear shaped, pear shaped by challenges. Okay, next question. How do you remember? How do you stay in memory? And by that memory, um, the person that was asking me this question, um, they meant, you know, how do you actually stay present and awake and, and not forget something greater, not forget that connection to the present moment, to consciousness, to being? Well, the best way, and this is what I've always practised, is that memory is a gift, a gift. Think of Christmas, think of holidays, think of your birthday. Memory is a gift. It's given. You can't really uh, call up your memory. It just comes. You just remember. One minute you don't remember, you're completely unconscious of something, and then you remember. So memory is a gift. It's given. So the real test is don't refuse the gift when it's given. And sometimes that gift can be given at the oddest times. It can seem like a moment like you're driving and you suddenly remember something. And the important thing here is don't refuse the gift when it's given. So I have found like I, <clears throat> I have a notebook and I write something down, I jot something down. Or if I'm driving, I just say thank you, thank you for that gift of memory. Um, I'm driving now and I will be ready to really pay attention to it as soon as I stop driving and I've reached my destination. So I've honoured the gift. I've honoured the memory. And I can guarantee you if you honour that memory, that gift, it will be there. The second I arrive at my destination, that memory hasn't left me, but I've still been able to attend to the driving. But similarly, you can make a note or... Um, you know, just actually acknowledge the memory and then you will find it's there when you need it. And it's like anything, if, if you acknowledge and receive gifts, gifts open-hearted, open-heartedly, then the giver will give you more gifts because who doesn't love, when you're giving a gift, who doesn't love to be um, acknowledged and appreciated for that gift? We all love giving especially when it's well received. So receive well that gift of memory and you will find the memory will keep giving. Okay, one more question. Uh, focusing, how do I know um, in the Conscious Confidence Program, how do I know that I need focusing? Well, focusing, if you're distracted, if you find it hard to keep your attention on one thing for more than three seconds, for more than two seconds, for more than one second, then you need to actually start paying attention. And we'll talk about this more in the next show because um, I've had a lot of questions about this. So maybe in the next show, in the next mailbag, we'll, we'll address that even further. So thanks, everyone, for your questions. There's a lot more and we'll get back to them in the next mailbag in the next show. So how do you find out more about conscious confidence? How do you learn more? How do you discover more? How do you find out more? I get asked that a lot. Well, I've written a book, Conscious Confidence, Use the Wisdom of Sanskrit to Find Clarity and Success, and that's available now at Amazon and Barnes & Noble, so Conscious Confidence, my book, and that's full of stories and practices and it tells you what the Sanskrit says about things and there's contemporary accounts of people actually learning and demonstrating this. So there's tons in there and so the book is a great resource. I'd like to feel that it's a resource or a manual for you to really use. So that's available and you can go and get that at Amazon, Barnes & Noble and on my website, ConsciousConfidence.com. If you want to know more about Conscious Confidence, go to my website, ConsciousConfidence.com because there's a lot there. There's podcasts and they're available on my website and also on YouTube. There's uh, magazine articles and a lot of other press and interesting things to read on my website. There's a blog with tons of other information and things to read. So if you want to know more and think more broadly and deeply about this, that's all on, on my blog. And on my website are two free videos you can download and some worksheets, and they're all about alignment and balance. It's me guiding you through two videos and some worksheets which you can print out about design your own alignment guide and this is your personalized guide 
to coming into alignment and balance that would suit you in your life. So go to my website and give me your email address and I can send you those two videos. It's instant access to the videos and the PDF worksheets for designing your own alignment guide. And then you can get in touch with me on social media, Facebook, Instagram and YouTube. Drop me a line, ask me any questions. And in next show, we're going to talk about, I'm going to be talking about the power of speech and language. So on our next show, the power of speech and language and how meaning determines our reality because we literally speak ourselves and our life into existence. So words are so powerful. And to finish off, we're going to have the peace prayer so you hear some actual Sanskrit. And this is from the Yajur Veda and it's thousands of years old. May peace radiate there in the whole sky as well as in the vast ethereal space everywhere. May peace reign over all the earth, in the water, in all herbs, trees and creepers. May peace flow over the whole universe. May peace exist in all powers. May there be peace, only peace. Peace, peace, peace to us and all beings. Om Dya Shanti Antarik shan shanti, pretty we shanti, apa shanti, o shadhaya shanti, wanas pataya shanti, wish we deva shanti, brahma shanti, sarwang shanti, shanti rewa shanti. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. See you next time. Thank you for listening to Conscious Confidence with Sarah Main. Join us next month on Transformation Talk Radio for more timeless wisdom with Sarah's exciting and innovative approach to living. Discover more joy, freedom, and step into your limitless potential. For more information on Sarah Main and her work, Or to listen to past shows, visit sarahmain.com. Views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio.